Hi everyone, sorry about the so-so video quality, it's still okay, we've still got a bit of natural light happening but uh, at the moment it's, we well, you, you can't really see very well but uh, yeah, very very dim clouds out there at the moment, we even had a bit of uh, thunder just a moment ago. But I wanted to get this done because I wanted to do this for uh, this particular person, this Transformers collector. And at the same time, uh, I thought about someone else who was also was getting into Transformers that I've been viewing a couple of videos of recently. Um, anyway, mostly um, for... <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying... I know one of them. I'm trying to... Get... Oh, Toys R Us. That was it. Yeah, Toys R Us, um, who... Uh, started his uh, channel last year, I think. Or it, it gained a lot of traction last year because obviously of lockdown and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, he's been he's still doing a lot of uh, Transformers related videos, a lot of like reviews. And he um, obviously is a big collector. He actually collects a lot of the Japanese toys as well, which is uh, quite interesting. And um, the other person I'm thinking of is Amber the Fangirl, who. Um, did um, some videos recently about autism and that sort of thing, uh, for, uh, her being autistic herself, and she's only just recently got into Transformers, so maybe she might find this interesting. The thing in particular I'm going to show off is this, the arc, or the, uh, or rather the complete Transformers arc, uh, published by IDW, which of course... Uh, are they still? Yeah, they're just, yeah, yeah. I'm um, getting them confused with Dreamwave. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Dreamwave had the Transformers quite right. So then went out. Then they went out of business. Then IDW took over. But yeah, basically this, um, because I wanted to show off the fact that this is quite a. This is actually quite a very good book because it basically features the model sheets of every single character that featured in the Generation 1 cartoon. Um, so we can um, have a look here at old Optimus Prime. Hopefully you'll be able to see him alright. But uh, yeah, these are based on the actual model sheets that they were, um, that Sumbo and Marvel created um, for the actual cartoon. I'm guessing more so Marvel, but then I guess Sumbo got a little bit more involved later on because um, um, from what I know um, or from what would make sense, Hasbro went to Sumbo, but Sumbo were quite a new company at the time, so they went to Marvel which had some experience at producing animation and the rest of the day is history. So basically, yeah um, Hasbro went to Sumbo, Sumbo went to Marvel, Marvel went to overseas studios <laughs> like Toei and Acom and a, several, and a few others in South Korea. But yeah, they managed to all uh, pretty much get the job done. So yeah, <laughs> but of course, before the animation gets produced overseas, um, what they do is they produce the model sheets for each character, as well as the storyboards, which are like little comics. And they have little instructions written down in certain places, what, what, what a character would be doing, where a character should be positioned, um, like what's going on? Like if there's like if there's supposed to be some kind of a laser effect or something, they usually would have them note um, noted all over the little um, storyboard panel. Ah, uh, this is the one I'm searching for. <laughs> um, not so much. Well, funny enough, actually, was it Blue Streak? He said, yeah, I've just watched his last video. I think he said he got a Blue Streak from the new Siege line. But um, the other one I'm, I'm showing off is Skyfire or Jetfire or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> The uh, controversial one due to shenanigans caused by Harmony Gold. Um, yeah, I actually made a bit of a mistake. I actually thought that uh, for legal reasons that they couldn't sell the uh, Jetfire toy in American markets after, say, about 1985. But no, that's actually not the case. They continue to sell um, the Jetfire figure um, until 1987. So yeah, that um, catalogue that Russ shown um, that a few videos ago, if you've been, if you've been watching his videos, um, probably not anyone from this channel, but um, if, if people have, I mean, I have, but um, yeah, if you've, been, if you've been paying attention and watching those, then yeah, I kind of made a mistake. I went in the comment section and corrected myself going, oh no, 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 sorry, no, I was mistaken. No, they did sell the toy until 1987. So um, yeah. 
I think, in fact, actually, now that I remember, think about it, thinking about it, because obviously this was a thing that affected the Robotech toy line as well for Matchbox, and it just hit me, um, just right, right then and there, that um, we did have the, they did have the regular version of the Valkyrie, the one that um, uh, Hikaru Ichijoyo uh, pilots for the first time in Macross, um, or Rick Hunter, if you prefer, if you're from Robotech, I really should use the um, American names for this. Or whatever. Anyway, I mean, I'm using both. But anyway, the the one that's red. Um, but anyway, that basic model. That's the one that is part of the Robotech toy line, but not the Skull Leader version. The Skull Leader version, I think, was the one that uh, Jetfire was based on, and that was the one that Harmony Gold, or rather, um, yeah, Harmony Gold slash Mac, uh, Matchbox, they couldn't use because obviously the toy mold was bought by Hasbro, and Hasbro are currently using it. And yeah, um, and then the Agrama family years later decided to throw up a huge um, hissy fit about um, Hasbro trying to continue hindering their ability to sell Robotech themed merchandise. When really, no, they're not. They, you know, they were just lucky to have gotten the rights to the um, Valkyrie toy first. But anyway, enough about that legal headache. <laughs> Um, oh, let's, uh, let's show off some Decepticons. Let's show off Soundwave and uh, Laserbeak. Yeah, I can actually uh, take my time with these videos a bit more now because I have fibre! Yes, I have now have fibre internet, which means that an upload of a 20 minute video or more that usually would take several hours now takes about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that is a huge difference! That is a huge difference. It really is. Oh, so glad that um, uh, someone came and uh, installed it. A very, ni very nice person as well um, came and installed our new internet. So yeah, at first we thought it was going to have a bit, a few more issues to sort out, but no, came and did it, and it's all done. So that is absolutely superb. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, actually, that one thing I want to show off is, uh, well, actually. As well as characters, also show off other stuff. Like, for example, here we have the Ark and the Nemesis. The Ark being, of course, the ship that brought the Autobots to Earth, and the Nemesis being the ship that the Decepticons had before they boarded the Autobots on the Ark, and then they all crashed on Earth. So, yeah, there you are. And, of course, the Nemesis appeared again in Beast Wars, um, though slightly different looking to the one you see here, because, obviously, that was CGI. Um... Uh, but yeah, the one I wanted to show off um, was because this, uh, and like I said, this book is very extensive, and I'm going to be proving that in just a moment because, well, first of all, I want to show off one of the designs from season four, which is the rebirth uh, free parter. Um, where is he? Where is he? Ah, uh, um, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, actually, both of these would actually work. Yeah, both of these work out quite well. We have um, Chrome Dome and Brainstorm of the Headmasters. Now, if you take a look closely at their designs, of course, these are the ones that they featured in the American cartoon in the free part of the Rebirth, which um, is the fourth season and acted pretty much as the final episode in the American continuity of cartoons. But of course, the show continued in Japan. And, um, uh, because uh, Toei continued to work on the Transformers series in Japan on behalf of Takara, Hasbro's Japanese partner, of course, who was still selling the toys there, including a few exclusives. Um, hold on. Um, the reason uh, for the... Uh, actually, uh, sorry, I just lost myself because I'm trying to do two things at once. Um, but yeah, but uh, of course, the uh, as we know, the series, the animated series, these continued in Japan. They actually disregarded season uh, season four, the rebirth, and they wanted to continue um, the story as is. Although they did get uh, the rebirth, but it was um, only released on the complete Headmasters DVD series in Japan as an OVA extra, of some kind, um, I believe. Um, actually, can we start with? Yeah, actually, let's start with this because when Toei. So Toei, sorry, <laughs> I'm a Toei fanboy. I should know how to pronounce the company's damn name. Anyway, um, sorry, the um, <clears throat> I'll just look here. When they did the uh, animated series, they actually used more toy accurate designs. So here's Chrome Dome looking a lot more toy accurate. 
because obviously it makes sense that the character should look like the toys because otherwise yeah people will just become a bit disillusioned if that's the case by the way i'm sorry if there isn't um if you can't see everything for one way in one way shape or form and here's this is the one i want you to show brainstorm because the acom design um the one that they uh, the uh, the one that acom uses for the rebirth because it that was animated by acom not by toei um well the one they used was a i'm guessing was a prototype because he had a faceplate but here you can see no faceplate and that's because the uh, the actual figure has no faceplate <laughs> But yeah, this um, not just features all the characters from the American cartoon, but the Japanese one as well. So this is um, actually, they sold them as the Arc 1 and the Arc 2. Arc 1 featured all of the um, American model sheets. Arc 2 featured the Japanese ones. So, and this book I've got here, this actually has both. So you've got all of them. Um, let's see, let's go to Super God Master Force um, uh, for the next one, just to show off. Um, there's a couple of characters. Um, I've just shown off a few Autobots. I'll show off some Decepticons. Actually, hold on. Before we uh, carry on, <laughs> he said he was going to do one of uh, Skullgrin, um, a video on Skullgrin this Friday. Here you are. Here's Doris. <laughs> Here's his Japanese counterpart. But basically, yeah, it's the same Skull Ball um, Pretender um, character there. But. Um, I, I get, I get, well, uh, well, actually, I was going to say, um, looking more toy accurate, but of course, this is the only time he appears in animation, so there you go. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but no, there was... Um, oh, come on, where are they? Where? 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 Where are they? Oh, come on. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, we got... Um, oh, yeah, we got the two... Um, uh, Decepticon Godmasters or Power Masters, if you prefer. The two that transformed into jets. Here we've got Buster, who I think is. Does it say? Um, Dre uh, Dreadwind in English. Apparently, he and his brother Buster. Oh, no, this is Buster. So, him and his brother Hydra, sorry. Apparently, both come from East Germany, according to um, the first intro sequence to Super God Master Force. They had little stats that come up. And apparently, he and his brother come from uh, East Germany. Which obviously at the time was very controversial, considering you know they were more of a communist country at the time. Anyway, here's Hydra, uh, his brother, and he is Darkwing. Yeah, and he sold in the US as Darkwing, and of course their combined form, the 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 jet that they um, transform into in Japan is called Dark Wings, plural. But um, I don't think that yeah the combined mode never had a name. In English markets, they just uh, said uh, they just combined it. Oh, oh, I might as well show this off. Yes, we got the combined form of Dark Wings. Is it? To oh no! Oh, sorry, tell a lie. No, it's called Dreadwing in um, English markets. The combined form. I am absolutely stupid. I am sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Um, Dark Wings or um, Dread uh, <laughs> Dreadwing in English. So again, I do apologise. I, I, I don't know why I thought it didn't have a name. And here's the guy that they just announced coming soon as a toy, Black Zarak, at least in Japan. Hopefully without Gold Plastic Syndrome, because we all know what happens with Gold Plastic Syndrome. <laughs> or at least any uh, person that's familiar with the toys knows that, yeah, over time, Gold Plastic Syndrome will just become absolutely brittle. It breaks off, it goes everywhere. It's not that great. So that's why, obviously, they don't use it nowadays on Transformers Society. So hopefully the new Black Zarak will not have any GPS whatsoever. There you are. Um, let's go on to Victory. Um, let's, um, actually, yeah, let's, uh, there's one, uh, one of the Brain Masters and their combined form. Uh, look at Braver. And here beside him, we've got the combined form of Rogue Caesar. These are the three... Um, uh, brain masters that transform into cars like little dragsters and they all um, transform into robots and their little partners become the face of the robots and all of them combine to form this um, combined form road Caesar and um, oh yeah just so we can uh, also put this to bed hold on if I can find it yeah there we are Desarus okay his name is Desarus not Deathsaurus seriously people just 
I don't know what Hasbro's issue is with this guy's name. His name is supposed to invoke a kaiju. That's his alt mode. He is a bird monster, which well, that is a kaiju. It's a very common kaiju in Japan. So yeah, that is what it is. It's Desarus. It's not Deathsaurus. Can we please put it to bed already? Hasbro, make an official statement. Say you've made a mistake, and can you just drop it? <sighs> Sorry for that rant, but I absolutely. Because that is not his name in Japan. It, 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 this clearly has his name. This is his name. It's Desarus, okay? Oh, and it really ticks me off that, you know, Chris McFeely would go and, you know, go back on his, you know, absolutely fine in the audio commentary, but when he did um, future episodes of The Basics, no. Just, just no. No. That is not his name. Just no. I know it's, it's probably not going to end. You're probably going to get lots of people going, oh, but his name is Desaurus. <laughs> no, it's Desaurus. I mean, me, any any fans of the Japanese versions of Transformers would know that is what it is. Anyway, enough about that. Oh, let's go to, let's go on to Transformers Zone. Let's see good old Diatlas and Sonic Bomber in action. Or at least their models are. <laughs> well, at least their models. Um, and both of these guys would be reused in uh, the Brave Express Mike Guy in 1993 as... Um, uh, Diatlas became Goryu and Sonic Bomber became Hiryu, both of them being piloted by a guy called Joe the Ace, um, who kind of became a rival to the human character Maito Senpujin, who is the basically the pilot of Mike Gein, um, the human pilot that is. Oh, and yes, yes, Mike, yes, I'm aware Mike Gein is in Super Robot Wars now. <laughs> Lots of people are going, yay, Mike Gein's in Super Robot Wars, let's get the other brave robots in. Yeah, you do. You guys do realise that they prefer human piloted, <laughs> human piloted Becca. But then again, if you stop and think about it, they kind of did. I mean, Seiji was in Dagan. Um, I can't remember. This, is it Hikaru or something? It's the android um, that kind of becomes the engine for Firebird. So you've got that. Um, Jay Decker. I guess you could have Yuta, the, everyone's favourite little boy girl, <laughs> piloting uh, Jay Decker like he did in one episode towards the end of the series. Uh, Goldran, uh, oh no, Goldran had just the three boys, but they never really piloted him, I, I don't think. And well, they can have Dagwon, um, because of um, Ean, Fire Ean, um, you know, um, uh, because he was basically the consciousness of the mecha, so you know, you can have you can have Dagwon. Although, mind you, apparently they tend to stretch out a bit more now in Super Robot Wars. I think they tend to, um, they, they, they do prefer human piloted mecha, but I think they've also only just um, expanded so that they add other characters which are um, you know senti more sentient robots so they've got Transformers Zone in here and um, they've also got um, a few models from oh, Battle Stars Return of Convoy which of course features old Star Convoy here and I've uploaded the advert for this guy recently so yeah, there you go. And of course, he becomes a micro master base, since that was the thing. Oh, that was the thing that uh, Gory and he uh, not Gory and Hiri, sorry, Di Diatlas and Sonic Bomber. They both also became micro master bases because Zone and this toy line was obviously heavily influenced by the micro masters. So yeah, that's why. Or micro transformers, as they're called in Japan. They don't call them micro masters because any robot. Um, with the name Master in its name, originates from a planet called Master. That's part of the Japanese continuity. So that's why they were called Micro Transformers, because they actually come from a different planet called Planet Micro, or Planet Micron, or something like that. It was oh no 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 Micron is the name for the uh, Minicons, which came later on. No Planet Micro, that was it from uh, Transformers Victory. Uh, yeah, so they come from a different planet in the Japanese continuity, and might as well. Um, do we actually have any from? Oh, we do have the um, six combiners from... Oh, a lot of them were from Operation Combination. And, um, yeah, that was about it. Yeah, Operation Combination was only a very small toy line. It had the Micro Master... Um, sorry, Micro Transformers, like these miniature six combining robots. Um, one of them was a redeco of an existing one from the previous toy line, from Battlestar's Return of Convoy. Uh, um, six liner became six train uh, in this toy line. Is it? Um... Yeah. So yeah, six uh, six liner became six train. So the top one became the bottom one um, the following year, along with um, there was introduced six builder, six wing, and six turbo, and uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, those ones. Plus they also resold the protector bots, and they all formed a big robot called um, Guard City, 
that was what their combined form was called. And they also re-released the Combaticons, and the combined form they formed was called um, um, God City, Battle Gaia. That's it, yeah, Guard City and Battle Gaia. That's it, um, yeah, Battle Gaia. That's the one I was thinking of. And um, I might as well show this off, because he got a toy recently. Yes, Super Megatron finally had a toy made of him at long last. Um, I can't remember if it was part of Siege uh, or uh, Earthrise now, was it, or whatever, or whatever it's called. It's one of the recent toy lines. I don't know. There've been so many, and to make matters worse, um, what's it? Obviously, the Kingdom toy line that's coming out now um, has a lot of Beast Wars characters. Well, this year is also the f um, is it the twenty fifth anniversary of Beast Wars? Um, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because. Um, Fifth anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So this will be like the twenty fifth anniversary of Beast Wars, and what they're doing in America is that they're re-releasing the original molds, the original toys. I think with just different paint applications and all that as well. So, um, yeah. Oh, this is Dark Nova or Star Giant. This is the main um, energy being from. Is it? Yeah, yeah. This is from Battlestar's Return of Convoy. This is basically the leader of the Decepticons, not Super Megatron or Ultra Megatron. It's this guy. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there you are. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, this is um, basically it's a, a little bit just torn off there, but I was just um, uh, I guess how it's just been stored. But uh, yeah, I originally got this from Forbidden, Forbidden Planet for twenty two pounds fifty. So yeah, quite a big hefty, big hefty book for this, but it's definitely worth it if you can pick it up. Or if not that, then. Um, it's available in two separate books, the Ark and the Ark Two. Um, and of course, the Ark One is for the um, American. Um, sorry, the Ark One is for the American produced stuff, and the Ark Two is for the Japanese series. I'll just point that way. <laughs> so yeah, there we are. I just wanted to show this off. As I said mostly for. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Toys are us. That's it. Toys are Russ. That's it. Um, I wanted to show this off mostly for him, but um, hey, if Amber the fangirl is also interested in this because she's just into Transformers or just getting into Transformers, so yeah, there you are. That is the um, arc, a complete compendium compendium of character designs, as it by Jim Sorensen, Jim Sorensen and Bill Forrester. That's it. So yeah. <laughs> Of course, I should have actually done that straight from the start. But yeah, I just wanted to show that off. Um, uh, this is completely unscripted. That's why it's all bit all over the place. So I do apologise. But of course, now I'm you know amazingly happy because now I've been talking for nearly 25 minutes, and I'm pretty sure this is going to upload in just about like two or three minutes or something on YouTube, which is awesome. So yeah, I can upload longer videos now. Yay! <laughs> Anyway, um, for those who enjoyed this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm glad to have um, entertained you for at least nearly 25 minutes or so. So I've uh, rambled on. And sorry if I've been trying to show you the images and they haven't really come out all that great. I'm, again, only using the camera on my Chromebook um, and everything else. So, yeah, but ho hopefully you have enjoyed it. And, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys later. So do take care and thanks for watching.